I think I've, I've commented before on negative rates and described it as the waterboarding of, of the economy and the banking system. But I think where, where it really exposes uh, the cracks in the system is in the pension industry. Uh, pensions are unfunded, and if you uh, account for things on a capitalized basis, you, know, you can't capitalize liabilities with a negative uh, interest rate. Uh, the best you can do is look for uh, a long enough maturity and, and where, where you find a positive rate, and it's a very small rate. If you capitalize your liabilities there, you end up with a huge number, uh, and it's pretty clear already that pensions are uh, underfunded they're going to be underfunded by a lot more uh, at negative interest rates. And that's been exacerbated by the uh, demographics of this region as well, yes? Uh, yes, demographics uh, are everywhere, actually. Um, but particularly in developed markets and, and Japan, and Japan is where negative uh, interest rates have been very topical. Uh, and, and you could see that negative interest rates introduced in Japan really didn't work uh, because um, of their demographics and you know, how they're going to fund their retirement and pensions. Right? Give us a sense of the roadmap then. How is this all going to play out? If you do foresee a crisis in the banking, the financial sector, how are we going to get there? What could be done to avert it? Uh, it it's very difficult to see how we get there because, um, I mean, history has shown that investors, policymakers uh, have never addressed a problem until, until a crisis occurs. Uh, and, and that could be some time coming. Um, but they're not going to address it. We, we saw that in the, in the banking and, and uh, financial crisis in 2008, where banks were very highly geared, uh, the mortgage market was, was very highly geared, uh, and, and nothing was done to address this until it was too late. And yet, Brian, you are tactically overweight credit, overweight leveraged loans as well. Why? Uh, yes, when, when, you're, when you're in a difficult position, when uh, general conditions are poor, what you want is seniority in the capital structure. You want to move uh, to a position of uh, seniority and also security. So, you know, we're, we're overweight leveraged loans because, uh, for one thing, they're, they're senior to bonds. They are secured, first lien mostly. Uh, and additionally, uh, if the fear is uh, higher interest rates, I know this is uh, counter topical, but you know, if, if the risk is higher interest rates, loans pay a floating rate coupon and are therefore uh, zero duration. Okay, and your underweight equities. I, I just want a bit more uh, substance on this from you, Brian. On, on what time horizon? Because the longer term macro themes in Asia, rising consumption, the growing middle class, they still remain intact, don't they? Uh, Yes, they do, but there, there is another dynamic which hurts Asia very much, and that is, you know, we've been in a global trade war since 2008. I and mean, if, you, if you got into 2008 uh, and you're a government or a regulator, what do you see? Uh, the consumer uh, has got no money to spend. Firms have got no access to credit because the banks are, are insolvent, basically. And the state uh, has spent all their money bailing out the banks. Export growth has been sluggish still as well, hasn't yeah. it? So that's so, another. You know, that, that's central to the entire currency devaluation story. Yes, and 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 also that's why um, it's difficult to tell the direction of currencies based on on policy because policy is coloured by a a currency war. Um, so, what's interesting about the trade war uh, uh, scenario is that it explains a lot of things. It explains, for one thing, a recession in manufacturing. And a recession in manufacturing must, uh, as a collateral uh, impact, uh, lead to a depression in commodities. And we've seen all that. It also explains China, which is a manufacturing heavy uh, economy. And, and it shows that the, the pivot that China is taking towards uh, services is not something intentional. It's something that's been forced upon them.